everyone! In this video, I'm going to discuss understanding our elasticity of demand formula. So specifically, I'm talking about our price elasticity of demand. I'm going to start with our definition of price elasticity of demand, which I'm notating epsilon p. Well, we have a ratio of the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Now, there are two interpretations of this ratio. Our first interpretation will get to what we call the arc or the midpoint elasticity formula. The second interpretation will get us to what we call the point elasticity formula. I'm going to start by thinking about our arc or midpoint elasticity formula. Now this formula is suitable for when we're evaluating a discrete change in our variables. So for instance, if we have a demand curve here, if the price rises discreetly from two to four dollars and as a result there's a change in the quantity demanded say from eight to four since our elasticity of demand is the ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price the trick is going to be to find our percentage changes associated with this discrete change now, our usual way of understanding percentage changes is to take the change in a variable, which is just the new value minus the old value. Then we divide that change by the old value and we multiply by 100. So this is probably what you remember from school. But this is actually not the way that we're going to understand the percentage changes when we're thinking about arc elasticities. And the reason is because if we do it this way, then the value of the elasticity changes depending on whether we're increasing the price or decreasing the price. To see this, say we increase the price from two to four, and as a result, the quantity decreases from eight to four. In our formula for percentage changes, our old quantity will be eight and the old price will be two, the new price will be four and the new quantity would be four. We could potentially use these numbers to find out our percentage changes for our elasticity. But if the price decreases from 4 to 2, which leads to an increase in quantity demanded from 4 to 8, the old and the new variables swap places. The old price will now be 4 and the old quantity will be 4. The new price will be 2 and the new quantity would be 8. If we put those numbers into our formula for percentage changes, we would get a different result compared to the case when we were increasing the price. So we would get two different elasticities associated with the same region of the demand curve because our elasticity would depend on whether or not we're increasing or decreasing the price. So economists do not like this. They don't want the elasticity to depend on the direction of the price change and they don't want two different elasticity values associated with the same area of the demand curve. Now the problem isn't with the numerator component of the formula for our percentage change since the magnitude of the change stays the same regardless of whether we're increasing or decreasing our variables. And the elasticity will always come out negative because one change will always be positive and the other one will always be negative. So that doesn't matter either. The problem is actually in the denominator of the percentage change formula where we are dividing by the old or initial value of our variable change. So what economists do is they use the midpoint of the discrete change on the denominator of the percentage change formula instead of the old value. And this fixes the problem because the midpoint will always be the same regardless of whether or not we're increasing or decreasing our variables. If we go back to our price elasticity of demand formula and we expand those percentage changes, it's going to look something like this. It's almost identical to our usual way of understanding percentage changes, except the denominator of our percentage change formula is just going to isolate that midpoint of the discrete change rather than the old value. Once we get here, those 100s will cancel out. We can actually rewrite this ratio of ratios by inverting the denominator ratio and bringing it up to become multiplication. If we do that, we're left with, well, the change in quantity 
divided by the midpoint of that quantity change, multiplied by the midpoint of the price change, divided by the change in price. We can rearrange this again to become, well, the change in quantity divided by the change in price multiplied by the midpoint of the price change divided by the midpoint of the quantity change. We can actually write this more succinctly even still by just rewriting those changes as deltas. So the triangles here are, are deltas, they mean change. And that's basically our arc or midpoint elasticity formula as it is often represented. So you might get slight variations in how the formula is expressed, but hopefully the formula that you've been given in your course either looks like this or that you can see how you get to that formula uh, and how that formula comes from this sort of expansion of our percentage changes. So let's quickly work through an example. Let's say that we are thinking about an increase in the price from two to four. Well, our elasticity would be well, negative four, that's our quantity change. We went from eight to four. Divided by two, that's the change in price. We went from two to four. We multiply that by, well, our midpoint of our price change. Our price went from two to four and the middle point between those two numbers is three. And we divide this by six, which is the middle point of our quantity change. We went from four to eight. And that's all equal to negative one. If you have trouble finding the midpoint between two numbers, you can always get it by taking the average. So for instance, if you want the middle point between four and eight and can't quite see intuitively that it's six, you can think about it as the average of the two numbers, four plus eight is 12 divided by two, which is six. So that's our midpoint or arc elasticity formula. Now our point formula is when we would like to evaluate an elasticity at a single point. So for instance, let's say we had a demand curve and we were interested in the elasticity at the point where the price is equal to one and the quantity is equal to five. Now here I've got again to the left of the screen our usual understanding of percentage changes. This time, when we expand out our price elasticity of demand formula, we're going to interpret the percentage changes as follows. And let's start with that percentage change in quantity. Well, since we are at a single point, we're going to think about the change in quantity as infinitesimally small, and we're going to write that dq. d here just means basically a very small change. And we divide that by q, and the Q here will be the value of the quantity at the point we're interested in, and we multiply by 100. We can also think about the percentage change in price in a similar way. So we have DP over P times 100. These 100s will cancel out. We can do the same trick with rearranging as we did with the arc elasticity, and we, we would get, well, DQ over Q times P over DP. And we can rearrange this again to get dq divided by dp times p over q. Note that dq over dp is just the derivative of our demand function with respect to price. So thinking about this demand curve here, if I told you that the demand function could be expressed algebraically as, well, q is equal to 7 minus 2p, then dq dp would be the derivative of the demand function with respect to price and it would be negative two. Q is five and P is equal to one. That's the point we're interested in. So if we wanted to think about the elasticity, it would be, well, dq dp, which is negative two times one, that's the price over five, and you would get negative two over five. One last common thing that you might get tested on is understanding that we can find dq dp uh, by thinking about the inverse of the slope. So for instance, let's say we had a straight line demand curve and we knew the slope of that demand curve. Well, we can technically kind of derive or find dq dp. To see the connection here, note that the slope is rise over run which is in the context of a demand curve, the change in price, that's rise, divided by the change in quantity, that's your run. Once we interpret these as infinitesimally small, we get the slope as equal to dp dq. 
So the slope is dp dq, which is the inverse of G dq dp. If then you had a problem and you were told that the slope of the demand curve was say negative a quarter, then you could derive dq dp from that information. It would be the inverse of the slope, which is negative four. You just swap the place of the numerator and the denominator. So here's a summary with the main points and the two ways of interpreting our elasticity next to one another. And you can see the similarities. Really, it's just a matter of interpretation of our percentage changes. And that interpretation will change depending on whether or not we want to understand the elasticity at a single point or over a discrete change. So I find that this is a really good activity to go through and to understand. It's really neat to see how our formula relates to our initial understanding of our demand elasticity as a ratio of percentage changes. And also you can see quite clearly the relationship between the midpoint and the point elasticity formula. They're actually quite similar. I've also found that going through this stuff makes understanding and remembering all of our other elasticities a lot easier because you don't need to memorize a whole lot of formulas. All you need to do is remember which elasticities relate to which changes in which variables. For instance, I know that the cross price elasticity looks at how quantity demanded for some product A changes when the price of another product, say product B changes. Likewise, we might think about income elasticity of demand, which relates quantity changes in demand to changes in income. Once we have those ratios of percentage changes sorted, it's easy to find a formula uh, by following the same steps as I went through before. So I hope that that does help. Going through this stuff really helped me when I was learning elasticities. I hope it helped you. I also have some other videos on elasticities on their interpretation and their different sorts of features. So please check those videos out if you're interested. Please also like and subscribe. I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night. Uh, stay safe and happy, everyone.